Hey there, so I wanted to make a quick tutorial on how to use Valgrind to track down interesting and challenging bugs quickly and easily. So I'm working on this uh, little project here where I've implemented a k-compare-and-swap primitive. So what's a k-compare-and-swap primitive? Well, it's like a multi-word CAS. What's CAS? So CAS is a simple synchronization primitive that allows you to uh, perform atomic read modify right to a single memory location. So here are the sequential semantics. Uh, it does this atomically. So it takes as its arguments an address, an old value or expected value, and a new value. And it reads the old value, uh, sorry, it reads the current value, stores it in old, checks if it matches the expected value, and if so, changes that address to contain the new value. And then it returns the old value. Basically, if the old value was equal to the expected value that you passed to the CAS, then you know that the uh, operation succeeded. Otherwise, it didn't succeed and it doesn't change A to N. So it's this nice kind of conditional primitive. CAS N, or KCAS as I'm going to call it, is a K word version of this that lets you do uh, essentially atomic CAS on K different uh, memory locations at the same time. Uh, the way it works is you you pass to KCAS uh, K different addresses, K different expected values, and K different new values. And if the K addresses all contain the K expected values, like if all the addresses contain their respective expected values, then all the addresses get changed to the new values and the KCAS returns true. Otherwise, none of them get changed and it returns false. So that's how KCAS works. Uh, this implementation, Tim Harris's implementation, I've got kind of just a slightly improved version of it. Uh, it uses these uh, KCAS descriptors. So the way that a KCAS operation works is you create a descriptor, you store all of the addresses, all of the expected values, all of the new values in the descriptor, and then it's a lock-free algorithm. So this, the processes can look at this descriptor and use the information in it to help one another perform their KCAS operations. And these KCAS descriptors, pointers to them are stored in memory. Uh, so you replace some program value with a pointer to a CASN or KCAS descriptor. And uh, when uh, you use this KCAS algorithm in your program, you have to be able to distinguish between your application values and these KCAS descriptor pointers. So the algorithm steals a bit, uh, actually two bits, from each word. And you use those two bits to figure out whether you're looking at uh, some you know, piece of application data or a KCAS descriptor, uh, or actually it uses another type of descriptor as well called an RDCSS descriptor. So that's why you use two bits to distinguish between these two different descriptor types. So that's just a really high level overview of what I'm doing. Uh, I ended up finding kind of an interesting bug that uh, I want to show you. Uh, let me just reverse my uh, changes here so I can show you the correct thing. Okay, so I'm going to compile my code to run it on this server. I'm going to make another video where I explain how to set up an IDE to get, you know, single button uh, cross-compiling to a different remote server, even tunneling through a gateway to get there. Uh, for now, I'm just compiling my code here and running a simple KCAS microbenchmark on this server. So what's the microbenchmark that I'm going to run? It's a very simple one. I have a large array. In this case, uh, I can specify the size of the array with this dash k, so size 1024. 1024 element array, and each process, in this case there's only one process, n equals 1 here, uh, performs kcas operations on cells in this array. Uh, in particular, I've got a 16 cas here, k equals 16, so I'm, I'm going to run one thread uh, performing 16 CAS operations where the uh, elements of the array that we're going to perform the, the 16 CAS on are chosen uniformly randomly from the whole set of 1024 array elements. We're going to repeatedly perform KCAS operations for one second and we're going to see you know what the performance is sort of what this looks like. So I ran this and I've, I noticed a couple weird things. So first the throughput is pretty low. I think I expected that a single process is going to be able to do more than 253 KCAS operations per second. That's uh, phenomenally low. Uh, additionally, I have this validation number here. What's this validation number? It's the number of successful operations that were performed by a thread. So here I'm actually 
only getting a single operation performed. I don't know, something weird is happening with my validation number here. So I have, the way that I do validation in this uh, experiment is, it's a very simple experiment, right? You just have an array and you're doing KCAS on 16 different elements of this array each time you do an operation. What am I doing with this KCAS? I'm actually incrementing each of the cells touched by the KCAS by one. So what do I know? I know a lot of uh, nice things about this array. I know that it's going to have an interesting structural property where if I sum up all of the entries of the array at the end of the trial, then the sum of all of those entries should be equal to uh, 16 times the number of operations that were performed because each operation increments 16 cells by one. So this gives me a nice kind of checksum that I can just, you know, verify at the end of the trial to make sure that everything's working properly. And the numbers here don't seem to add up. So total is the sum of everything in the array. That's 16. So there's been one operation completed, basically. Then validation says that there was one operation completed. Uh, this scaled total here is total divided by 16 divided by k. So we're just scaling that the total of the array down so it should be equal to the number of operations. So that's at least these three figures are consistent, but they don't match the completed operations which is 256 or the throughput, uh, which is just slightly lower because technically it was a little bit longer than one second. It was uh, 1.01 seconds. So something funny is happening here. And what happens if I, if I lengthen the trial? So I tried this, let's run a three second trial instead of a one second one. Uh, turns out the throughput, the number of operations per second, actually decreases in the three second trial. And if I run like a five second trial, then we'll see that this pattern continues. We went from 253 operations per second to 123 per second to 88 per second. So we're slowing down. So this is really strange. What's happening here? Uh, I'm going to use this nice tool, Valgrind, to help us figure out what's going on. Uh, and I'm going to give, I'm going to specify one extra parameter on this Valgrind call. Normally you can just slap Valgrind in front of your command and it'll run. Valgrind sandboxes your whole memory space, it emulates your memory space, it you know, traps all of your reads and writes and just uh, does a lot of extra logging to give you lots of information about what's happening in your program. The thing is that slows down your program a lot. It also doesn't inherently support multi-threading. So, well, I mean, it supports it, but it doesn't support it in, like, an efficient way. It just has each thread take a global lock and then run for a while and release the global lock. So you can only have one thread running at a time. And initially, the way, by default, the way that it uh, schedules threads is it just sort of lets them try to contend on this global lock. And, you know, it's not a fair global lock. Whoever gets it, gets it, and that's who gets to run. And so you can get really extreme unfairness between threads that can sort of obscure concurrency bugs that you'd like to find and also you know uh, depending on how you structure your test harness might lead to like infinite runs and things like that so you can bypass all of those problems by specifying this parameter fair scheduling equals yes uh, it doesn't matter here because I'm only running with one thread n equals one so in this particular example it doesn't matter but you know you can get into the into the habit of using this parameter because if you're doing concurrent data structures you know you're just always going to want to specify this parameter it's going to help you tease out concurrency bugs it's going to help you make sure that your things terminate in a timely fashion and that you have sort of reasonable executions that more closely mimic what you would see on a CPU like, any, like in a real execution so let's run this through Valgrind what do we see so we get a whole list of errors and if I scroll up by the way, there are lots of errors here, 2.6 million errors trapped. And it only shows, you know, sort of like unique errors. Uh, so it doesn't flood you with all of the errors it finds. It just sort of shows you like a relevant subset of interesting errors that you should look at. So we've, most of these are conditional jump or move depending on an uninitialized value. So that means you have like an if statement or a comparison, uh, you know, some sort of branch, some sort of comparison that uh, is... Uh, depending on some value that you've never written to, and you probably don't mean to do that. So that's almost certainly an error. Up here, if we go up to the very top, we can see that there's a use of an uninitialized value of size 8. So we're reading some single 64-bit word that was never initialized. Here's where it happened. This is like the stack trace for the thread that did this illegal access. So we can see it's happening at add val address in kcast.h line 45. That's being called from atomic increment k. Uh, this is our... Uh, you know, test harness operation that's picking 16 slots in the array and is incrementing all of them by one by using a KCAS. Uh, and we'll see what addval address is. So this is a lot of really valuable information about exactly where this is happening. So let's go look at these, these two lines, ubench.cpp line 140 and kcast.h line 45. 
So ubench.cpp line 140 is right here. So what is this code? This is the code that's run, this is atomic increment k, this is the code that's, you know, invoked by a thread repeatedly as it's supposed to perform these KCAS operations on the array. And here we're basically creating a new KCAS descriptor. Uh, this is how we specify what kind of KCAS operation we want to do. We create a descriptor that contains all the addresses, old values and new values, then we pass it to KCAS down here. Uh, so we create this new descriptor and then uh, this this ends up being 16. Uh, so we, from 0 up to 15, add, you know, the appropriate slot in the data array, uh, you know, as an address, and then as an old value, we read that slot of the data array, and as a new value, we increment it by 1, and we call this add val address function uh, on the KCAS descriptor. So what does that function do? Uh, this function uh, basically builds up this descriptor, so row by row we have these entry rows. What's an entry? A KCAS entry. Here's the struct up here, KCAS entry t. It just contains an address, old value, and new value. So this add val address is just adding an address, old value, and new value that we'd like to be involved in the KCAS. So here's the, you know, the address being set, the old value being set, and the new value being set, and then we increment the number of entries. So we're just growing this descriptor bit by bit. And so line 40, if I go back to the, the you know, shell here, then I can see kcast.h line 45. Going back here, line 45, this is where the uninitialized access is happening. So what could it be? Well, it can't be address. This address is a function parameter. It's, uh, it's initialized. It can't be this uh, location that we're writing to because, you know, you only get this error, uninitialized, you know, access on a read. You don't get it on a write. You would, you would spuriously get this all the time because you write to addresses to initialize them. The only thing in this line that can be this uninitialized access is access to this num entries. So maybe num entries was not initialized. So I'll go back to where this, this addval address function was called from in, in ubench, and we look for the initialization of entries. So it's not initialized here. Entries doesn't appear here. Maybe it's in this create kcast descriptor. Well, here we just have, this is the create kcast descriptor. We just have a call the descriptor new, passing some arguments, and then we return the pointer. So it's got to be in descriptor new. This is a macro. I can expand the macro on the screen here. And I know it's kind of hard for some people to read macros, but uh, you can either see for yourself that this doesn't um, initialize num entries, or you can just take my word for it. So num entries was not initialized, and it turns out we really want to initialize it here. So we do pointer num entries equals zero. So we forgot to initialize num entries. And now I can recompile this code. So this is uploading my changes, recompiling. And now we go back to the server, and I'm going to run this exact same uh, valgrind test. So the valgrind test shows that there are zero errors. So we eliminated all the errors by initializing this variable, and it might have been really hard to figure out that this variable was not being initialized if we didn't have Valgrind just like immediately point us to that uninitialized access. And by the way, we can see that throughput is a whole lot faster. So not only did we fix, you know, these errors that showed up, our throughput is like way faster. And if we get rid of the Valgrind part of the command and just run it through, uh, this, this is much faster running through Valgrind emulating the memory space than we uh, were doing without Valgrind. Now if we run without Valgrind, we should see something much faster, and we do. We're up to half a million operations a second. This is a far cry from like two or three hundred operations a second. So there was something really wrong before, and our validation looks much more reasonable now. You know, we do 513,000 roughly operations, and that's the scaled total. If you multiply this by 16, you get the actual total in the array, which is this. So we've, we've got something that makes a whole lot more sense now. So what was actually going wrong? What was this num entries non-initialized, you know, problem uh, that was affecting our performance? I mean, obviously it's wrong if you don't initialize num, num entries, but why was this affecting performance so much? So if you look at the kcast.h in this add val address function where we were building up the kcast descriptor by, you know, adding these entries, we're incrementing entries. So if entries doesn't get initialized, even if it starts out as zero because our compiler is being very kind to us and it's zeroing out memory that it gives us, uh, this num entries field is just being incremented over and over and over again. Each new kcast is making it larger and larger. So the kcasts are going to get uh, less and less reasonable. <laughs> 
and you know you're going to be potentially performing the same cake ass over and over again on the same location on the same locations you know and on a superset of the locations so just a, a really nasty insidious bug that probably would have been quite difficult to track down without the use of Valgrind. And we can just uh, verify that as we increase the length of our trials, we don't see weird effects like we saw before, like throughput was slowing down as we increased the length of our trials. And we can see with three second trial there, it's just as fast. We went from 513 to 523. And with a five second trial, uh, there we'll see it's 525 or 526. So we're not getting that slowdown anymore. And, uh, you know, the validation sees more operations, and we're passing validation in every trial. So things look great now. So I just wanted to share with you uh, sort of what that looks like and, you know, just um, show you how easy it is to use Valgrind and how big the payoff can be. So hopefully that encourages you to check it out. And that's it for this one. I'll see you next time.